Hello everyone, I'm Gary Waterman. I'm a former police officer, I'm a Christian, and I'm also a victim of this terrible government fraud that links to... Ch oh, oh, what am I saying? It's some kind of nightmare. For a minute, I believed that I was being replaced by Gary Waterman. Recently, Gary Waterman has tried to establish himself as a sort of king of conspiracies, the man who is exposing the, the most frightening truths about the rotten heart of the British financial system. But his exposures seem to be having precisely the opposite of its intended effect. In actual fact, Gary Waterman is turning people away from the conspiracy movement. And I want to know why and how, and maybe if I understand how he does it, then I can do it even more effectively. So today we're going to study the life and works of Gary Waterman. What's he been up to recently? And what kind of effect is he having on other members of the truth community? Now this video is specifically about Sonia Poulton. And the reason I'm doing this is that several people have sent me a video clip of Sonia on her very first live show, which I found very interesting. And she mentions me and contradicts what I'm saying to the public. Gary Waterman is an ex-police sergeant. He's a partner in a property business for over a decade. And he fell out with his business partners. He resigned from the com company. And then he began to make huge claims about his ex-partner being involved with national and international fraud that links to trafficking. On one side of this belligerence, we have Gary Waterman. He is the former police officer from Dorset, turned born-again Christian, who believes himself to be the victim of the world's largest financial crime, one that he has independently discovered for himself, and he is determined to reveal the nature of this horrifying crime to the rest of the world, and, and that's what he's doing. He's calling in to just about every single bit of truth the media from his van. That You can see him in a van in, in the video clips that I'm playing today. On the other side is Sonia Poulton. And I have to confess, I don't really know much about her. I believe she used to be an ITN journalist, and she was also associated with some more esoteric channels, uh, ones that, that might have uh, David Icke associated with them. But I don't really know much about her, and I'm not really going to give her biography right now because it's not really something that she talks all that much about, at least not in the videos that I've seen. But I mentioned that Gary was trying to spread his message to all of the Truther media channels, including Sonia Poulton's channel, because as an independent journalist, she is a rising star of the Truthosphere. Sonia Poulton, I've spoken to you, but you are not committing to being involved in an interview with me. You are, appear to be linked to this system of fraud via the company's house registration system. You have promised me an interview and you have not followed through with that interview. You appear to be linked to this system of fraud via company's house registration system. That may explain why you're not responding. Gary is cross with Sonia because she won't put him on her show. She won't interview him. And he believes that the reason why she won't interview him is because she might be part of this vast cosmic conspiracy that he believes he's discovered. He's claiming that there is a fraud at Company's House that brings in all manner of people, including myself, including, I think, Russell Brand, Andrew Bridge, and all manner of people who've actually been speaking out. And Sonia does seem to have a point here because Gary does seem to demand to be featured on various stars of the Truthosphere's platforms. Uh, and he does so in a way that is rather aggressive. Tommy Robinson, Russell Brand, Carol Vorderman, Dr. John Campbell, Andrew Bridgen, Joe Rogan, Clayton Morris, Paul Thorpe, Nigel Farage, Katie Hopkins. So I ask you, please, Russell, do the right thing and address this as it should be. George Galloway, Mr Zelensky, Sonia Poulton, I'll turn to you. I've spoken to you on the phone and we've exchanged several emails. You appear to be reluctant to get involved in this at all because you're worried of um, defamation. Wanting to avoid defamatory content is a very sensible reason not to put somebody on your platform. If you think that somebody like Gary is going to say wild and zany things that somebody might find defamatory, well, it's your duty 
not to give somebody a platform. You don't really have a choice because you're not allowed to defame people. Gary doesn't seem to get that. And, you know, that's strange because he is a former police officer and he reminds us of that all the time. He should know that that is an illegal way to behave. And what about Gary's claim that Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, that war-torn country, which is currently dealing with an invasion of hordes of Russian soldiers. Well, Gary thinks that Zelensky is watching his vlogs. <laughs> I'm sure Volodymyr Zelensky has to take time out every single day when, uh, when Gary posts one of his videos. N never mind the, the, the invasion that is taking place in eastern Ukraine. All of that can wait because Gary Waterman has discovered the real pr problem with what's going on in the world. And I'm, I'm sure v Zelensky will, will, will take the time to, to fully cogitate on what Gary Waterman recommends and, and maybe discuss it with all of his advisors. No, no, don't tell me about the, the, the airstrikes, uh, the, the missiles landing in our major cities, disrupting our power infrastructure and dams. Gary Waterman has spoken. It's strange that Gary believes that these luminaries of the, the truthosphere and one world leader are all listening to him. As far as I can tell, the only people who listen to Gary Waterman are Mind of Steel viewers and, unfortunately for her, Sonia Poulton, because she is still very annoyed with Gary. And he's trying to suggest that we might have issues with him, uh, with what he's saying, and that we are in on the fraud. I've been told this weekend that he's now started defaming me, saying I'm in on the fraud. This is a lie, certainly regarding me, and it is defamatory. Gary's statements are clearly defamatory because he is accusing Sonia of a despicable crime, that of child trafficking, with absolutely zero evidence. That sounds like clear defamation to me. And if Sonia had any plausible way of getting any money out of Gary, I'm sure she would be perfectly entitled to sue. But remember, Gary is a man who lives in a van and may already be on the run from the law, from debts, and probably a series of county court judgments. So uh, good luck trying to sue a man when we have absolutely no idea where he is. But you know, there's a whole other side to Gary. He's not just a, a zany, swivel-eyed, born-again Christian fond of, of making wild accusations against women that he barely knows. You see, when Gary isn't busy defaming people, he's busy being condescending. Now, I'm not too sure if Sonia understood this, but I did explain it to her and I even showed her while she was on the phone, she went through and looked at Company's house and saw the forgery on the, on the register. Um, and this is because what they're doing is, and Sonia, this is for you, because most people are understanding it and going, wow, when I talk them through it, and they're saying, wow, this is the most important information for over a century, and I completely agree. Gary genuinely believes that the information he was trying to convey to Sonia is the most important information delivered this century. That would make it more important than, I don't know, the discovery of general relativity, uh, the discovery of DNA, plate tectonics, the invention of the transistor, and the modern computer. All of these human discoveries pale into insignificance compared to whatever it was, uh, Gary Waterman, the, the born-again Christian turned revealer of truth. If somebody were to come to you revealing the, the greatest truth to be revealed in a hundred years, I think, I think you could be a little bit more grateful than Sonia was. He rang me, talked me through his theory. And at first I thought, yes, he's right. He's absolutely right. Then I did some research and no, he's absolutely not. But people need to learn more about company law before they automatically assume that Mr. Waterman holds the keys to the universe. Rather than him making videos demanding to know why people like me haven't interviewed him. I mean, such entitlement, doesn't it smack of an ex-cop? Uh, Sonia appears to be uh to suggest that she knows more than a former police officer in terms of the law um now i'd just like to clarify that point that i was in the police for 18 years and i did actually have an input and some uh, learning and teaching on the 2006 fraud act and without a doubt 100 percent okay let me make this clear 100 percent certainty there is a crime that has been occurring by our very own governments 
by the forgery of the company's house registration system, okay? This is an obvious appeal to authority, an authority that Gary Waterman doesn't actually have, because although he was a former police officer, he never had input into the 2006 Fraud Act. That's, that's bullshit. He just made that up to sound impressive, to, to intimidate Sonia Poulton into believing that Gary has some kind of credibility in this particular field. Gary was not flown into the Houses of Parliament to, to advise the MPs on how best to vote on the, the 2006 Fraud Act. He was just a junior police constable doing frontline policing at that time and had absolutely nothing to do with the, the formation of this particular bit of legislation that he claims to be an expert on. It's a bizarre lie, isn't it? But if this is the opinion of one police officer, why don't we get another police officer to disagree with him? And, and that's exactly what happened. Mark Atwood, of all people, did this. Mark Atwood is a well-known conspiracy vlogger. He, he believes himself to be a poet, and he has a quite a popular YouTube and uh, Substack channel. And he brought his friend, Stuart, who is also a former police officer, to debate Gary. And it seems that I'm, I'm agreeing with conspiracy theorists here. This is nuts. But Stuart, the police officer, actually asked Gary some quite pointed questions. Show me the statute and the law that says that it has to. But you know that all of those registers aren't fully up to date because the man hours and the money that it takes to upload everything, right? Stuart, the incorporation document has to be registered on the register. It's there, and it was a paper register prior to going digital. I think I'm going to have to explain this a bit. So the basis of Gary Waterman's conspiracy theory is that he believes that most companies that have been registered on Companies House are not legally registered. And he believes that because he thinks that the company which processed their registration when that company was founded was itself not correctly registered. And he believes that because when he's delved through Companies House, he's noticed that the name on the founding certificates for certain companies doesn't match the, the name of the, the company as it's currently trading. And, and the reason for that is what that police officer just said, which is that companies have been registered in the United Kingdom for hundreds of years, and computers have only existed since the 1960s. And the British government did not pay to have all of those paper records typed up and converted into digital database records. Sometimes they just scanned the documents and associated them with the company, and they left it there, thinking that nobody would really need or care what the, the registered company name of an organization that was founded in the 1960s was. We, we, we only really care about what the company is called today. That's all you need if you're going to sue a company or, or deal with a company. But, but Gary Waterman has this idea fixed into his mind that these are illegal entity companies. And no amount of rational argument, even from a bunch of conspiracy theorists, will shake him from that firm conviction. I think we're going to have to go around in circles because unfortunately, right, you believe that every single company name should be on company's house so that you can see it in a digital format, correct? That's what company you're saying. An incorporation name. I agree with can you. I finish? Can I finish? You've asked me a question. Do you want me to answer it or not? i tell you what, right? You are very antagonistic because you're, sorry, not liking, you're not liking the fact, right, that I'm challenging your view on things. Stuart, the former police officer, is right. When Gary is challenged, he becomes petulant and sullen, like a child who's been told off. You can see just how pathetic his response is. He doesn't have any real answer, other than to restate his nonsense conspiracy theory. However, when a woman criticizes him, he behaves in a very different way. Instead of this sort of sullen withdrawn Gary we just saw, he becomes aggressive 
accusatory, believing that, that maybe if he shouts her down enough or makes horrible enough accusations, he, he'll get his way. He's a horrible person. That, that's the thing. You know what? I'm starting to think that Gary Waterman is actually a worse person than Mark Steele. And, and just to hear my logic for a bit. You see, Mark Steele left school age 16, never really had much in the way of good quality parenting, never had any education at all beyond that day. Everything else in Mark Steele's life is, is purely a power fantasy born from a man who knows that he will never achieve what he truly believes he deserved to achieve. That's all Mark Steele's ever done. But, but Gary isn't that sort of person. It, from what I can tell, he grew up in a decent enough household. He had an education. He went to police college, where they at least should have told him the rules of evidence. But Gary has chosen to reject all of that. And by being somebody who had the opportunity to do good, but chose to do bad, I think that makes Gary the worst person. Sonia is not linked to Madeleine McCann and fucking everything else just by using the same company to incorporate, farcical. But there isn't a link from Sonia Porton to Madeleine McCann. They've used the same company. That's similar to me saying, I've been to Sainsbury's and bought a sandwich, and so has Epstein. We, we're both linked to Sainsbury's. But there aren't any links when it comes to, in, like, just because you've incorporated with the same country, same company. It's quite like, it's Stuart, borderline crazy, Gary. It is crazy. And I wonder, has Stuart been watching old episodes of Mind of Steel? Because I think I made that exact same analogy in my very first show about Gary Waterman, except it wasn't a sandwich. It was a, a packet of crisps. But the point is the same, because Gary Waterman's idea of a link is that maybe Epstein's company and uh, Sonia's company may also have been founded by the same legal firm that processes hundreds or maybe hundreds of thousands of company foundings every single year. And because Gary doesn't really understand how corporate law works, he imagines that to be some kind of link. He, he believes that it is significant. Whereas anyone who knows the slightest thing about how companies are founded knows that the, the company that does your initial registration doesn't really matter. They're just providing a clerical service. But Gary lives in a profoundly sheltered world, one of ignorance and misogyny, and none of that is really going to get in the way of a good old accusation. Now, for the next bit, we're going to change tack. Um, Gary did a, an interview with a truth media chap called Bannerman. And uh, from what I can tell, Bannerman is somebody who is a true believer in the truth movement. And unfortunately, the video for this, uh, this recording went a bit wrong, so we only have the audio. You want to receive information about any organised groups established? Yeah, I mean, the more, the more we unite on this, I mean, there'll be groups I'm not even aware of yet, Absolutely. We all need to be working collectively together for the same end goal in a strategic, coordinated and timely way. Absolutely. Because otherwise, if I don't know about groups, they're all doing maybe doing the same sort of thing. We're duplicating work. We're not actually going to be as effective as we would be if we worked collectively together to, to resolve this. Now, you can tell me if I'm reading a little bit too much into what Gary just said, but it sounds to me like Gary is trying to appoint himself as a sort of strategic coordinator for the truth movement. He wants to build some kind of database of connections. He wants to, to know about what all of the groups involved with the truth movement are doing, and in some way centralize that information. I'm sure the truth movement will be totally fine with him doing that. That doesn't even seem slightly suspicious at all, does it? You have to have trust in him. Reminds me of the film, The Jungle uh, Kid. Is it, what's it called? Uh, jungle whatever. When the snake says, 
Trust in me. He wants every group in the country, every group in the United Kingdom to get in contact with him, give him their details. If you're in a group, he wants your details, he wants your address. And the fact is, let's be real here, he could be anybody. Have you not learned anything about the infiltration of the truth movement? Okay, I was wrong about that. Maybe there is something suspicious about a man who suddenly emerges into the truth movement and starts demanding everybody's contact information in order to build a database. Uh, yeah, I can see how that would not fit with the, the, the broadly anarchic vibe of the truth movement. <laughs> They're not the sort of people who like being in databases. If they, if they liked that sort of thing, they would not be members of the truth movement. And it's kind of odd that, that Gary seems to think that he might be appointing himself to this kind of central coordinating role, despite being, from what I can tell, some sort of fugitive on the run in his van. That doesn't seem to exude the kind of trust that would inspire him to take on the mantle of leadership. Then all of a sudden you've become a born again Christian, a born again, I'm a, I'm a policeman. When I'm a former police officer, ex-policeman, and a victim of this international government fraud, victim of fraud, Christian, born again Christian. Wonderful, we should all trust you now. And we should all give you our information. Mm. Truth, transparency, and trust it. And let you run the show, should we? And trust in you. So when they say that they're a Christian, they believe that they are putting into your head that they are a good person because this is a Christian country. I'm sure if it was talking to an Islamic crowd, he would say that he was a Muslim. I think I'm just agreeing with Mad Mix. And that is a profoundly painful thing for me to say. I'm agreeing yet again with a whole bunch of truthers, right? They would hate it if in fact, just by me saying that I agree with them, I'm probably arming an entirely other bunch of truthers to, to come at Mad Mix, Laura, Sonia. Because if I agree with them, and I'm obviously a member of Brigade 77 or, or, or some kind of government affiliated organization whose business is shutting down truthers and making their life harder. Well, if I'm agreeing with them, then they must be affiliated with me, which means they must be the corrupt ones, which means if they're talking smack about Gary Waterman, then Gary Waterman must be true, because everything I say is the opposite of truth. Well, there you go. That's how truthers feel. And, and that's, that's my conundrum, because if I agree with Mix, Laura, Sonia, to a certain proportion of, of the truth or audience, it will have precisely the opposite of my intended meaning, and there is absolutely nothing I can do to stop that. Gary Waterman, the ex-police officer, who's now come to save the world. Now he wants to bring down the establishment, and he's going to develop arrest teams. The peaceful, lawful, uh, strategic arrest teams. Strategic coordinated arrest teams. Good luck with that. If I could say it without fucking saying W instead of R, arrest teams. You think you're going to go and do these strategic arrests and the system's going to be on your side. You can't arrest a policeman. You would have to have some very good evidence because it will backfire onto you. And then all we're doing is acting like thugs. And as I think we've established, evidence is the one thing that Gary Waterman just doesn't have because he doesn't really understand what evidence is. We've seen how Gary Waterman picks at irrelevant coincidences. That the fact that uh, somebody that we don't like, maybe Jimmy Savile registered uh, a company using the same registration agency as, uh, as maybe Sonia did. I don't even know if that's true. It probably isn't. I just made that up. But that's the kind of coincidence that Gary is delving into and claiming that that's a link. He, he's also talking about these false entity companies. And that's also based on a complete misunderstanding of what it means to register a company. It's all such utter nonsense. And yet all these people are giving him platforms, but at the same time, a 
a sizable chunk of the conspiracy universe is starting to turn against him. And in fact, that's what I said right at the beginning of the show. I was saying that Gary Waterman appears to be doing my job for me. I started this channel because I just can't stand conspiracy theories. And I wanted to use my platform to expose just how ridiculous it all is. But you know how many converts I've made in all my time of preaching against conspiracy theories? Well, the answer is zero. Because I've never been able to convince a single person. And I've spoken with some of the people in this video. <laughs> I can honestly say, I don't think I have convinced a single one of them about a single thing. But all it took was Gary. <laughs> Gary Waterman, just by being such a, an odious little worm of a man, a, a dishonest cretin, a, a man who highlights absolutely every single thing that is wrong with the conspiracy movement. He makes it so much more plain than I could ever do. He, he makes the, the idea of being associated with the conspiracy theory scene seem utterly repulsive. <laughs> you know what, I'm gonna give the last word to Laura Nina. Gary Waterman didn't want to do an interview with me. He deleted my comments twice when I asked him. Mm, I wonder why. And I don't care. I really don't care if, you know, anyone thinks I'm being weak or divisive or negative or any of it. I've literally had enough of the truth movement. I don't think that Laura Nina is being weak, divisive or negative. What she is doing, though, is seeing the truth movement for what it really is. And what it is, <laughs> unfortunately, it's people like Gary Waterman. And everybody who's connected with Gary Waterman, all the people who gave Gary Waterman an uncritical platform upon which to spread his malicious defamation. Laura can see it. Mad Mix can see it. Sonia can see it. UK Column saw it the other day. There are so many people in the conspiracy movement who are starting to recognise that Gary Waterman is an absolutely loathsome little turd of a man who will make up any kind of lie in order to, to get his ridiculous defamatory message onto, uh, on, onto the truth of platforms. And, and why is he doing it? Well, I think Sonia explained right at the start of this show. And he fell out with his business partners. He resigned from the com company. And then he began to make huge claims about his ex-partner being involved with national and international fraud. All of this stemmed from a little dispute between him and the other managers of a freehold property that Gary Waterman had bought into. This is just some kind of elaborate revenge. Gary is getting revenge on a bunch of old age pensioners who just happen to be his neighbours in Dorset. And that's all this is, that's all it ever was. And I think a few people in the truth community are actually starting to see the truth for once. And maybe the more principled amongst them are realising that Gary Waterman is not the sort of person that any of us, under any circumstances, should seek to associate with. Well, uh, another Gary episode over. And uh, I, I can assure you it won't be the last because he is trying desperately to appeal to uh, the truth community and, and be on every single platform that, uh, that he can possibly be on. But I do sense that his demise may come soon because he is starting to annoy some of the more important people in his own community. That can't work out well for him. So I'm sure we shall all enjoy the schadenfreude of watching Gary Waterman eventually and inevitably melt down. And when that happens, Mind of Steel will be here to report upon it. And uh, until that time comes, or until next week, I shall see you very soon.